Okay, 22nd of February, Thursday, and we're surveying the engine room right now. You're looking at the top of a Volvo MD3B, 36 horsepower, three-cylinder diesel, marine diesel. And so, here's the new uh, dripless... Uh, Shaft seal, new uh, custom stainless shaft. We use a fuel filter here. What says Dahl Baldwin? That's the intake water strainer. That's a Graco. A couple of new uh, through hauls. Uh, these are the cockpit drain through hauls. Those are new. Cooling water intake through hull bronze for the engine. That's new. And there's the water lift muffler. Follow over here. There's the elbow. So I've just been tracing the cooling water circuit here. This comes from the intake through hull up to the uh, filter down through the transmission, cool the transmission, comes out of there, goes to this little bronze water pump, follows around here, tees off, goes into the exhaust manifold, and up here through the cylinder head and the thermostat, and the water all goes through the exhaust manifold, out through the the elbow and the water lift muffler. So that's the cooling circuit. Here's the uh, injection pump down here. I just brought rags and solvent so I'll clean off this old oil. And uh, just get it cleaned up before I service it. Engine has 980 some hours on it. Not bad. A quarter or a third of the way through its service life. Here's the oil filter down here, intake silencers. I'm going to take those apart and clean them. Imagine there's air filters in there. I'm going to clean those. That's one of the things that gets neglected on a diesel and makes them smoke. Here's the injector so you can see a typical injector right here. I like this engine. It has separate cylinders and cylinder heads so that if you had a bad valve or broke a ring or something on one cylinder, you don't have to tear the whole engine apart or take it out or anything. You just disassemble that one cylinder, which is very nice. And it also means that you can carry a spare rebuilt cylinder head and even a cylinder and piston and rings with you uh, in a shoebox or something a little bigger than that. Uh, here's how tall uh, cylinders are. But anyway... <coughs> It's entirely practical to carry an entire uh, top-end cylinder uh, along with you. Cylinder, cylinder, head, piston, the whole deal. And just have it, uh, you know, if you're really one of those people that goes cruising somewhere fur away, you can have a parts with you and, and do it. So that makes this a very practical, uh, true marine engine. A lot of the conversion engines of different kinds uh, you know, they're converted automotive things or some tractor engines or something, and they're not made that way. They're all one all one block, one cylinder head, and, uh, you know, it's a big uh, dog and pony show to uh, do a repair. So anyway, this one runs nicely. I'm not worried about repairing it, but uh, for the next owner, it's uh, it's the right kind of design. It's a real, uh, real marine engine. These little levers are compression releases here. So if you were going to try to hand crank this, you'd stick the crank back here on the back, open all three crack, uh, compression releases, uh, spin it around until that flywheel is going real good, and then shut down one, it'll start going boom, and two, and three, and boom, boom, and then boom, 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 boom. So that's how that goes. Uh, very handy. The thing about diesels is they don't really require any electricity to run, so you know you could lose your whole electrical system and still... Uh, be just trotting right along with this engine without any problem.
So, some little details here. Look at how beefy these uh, uh, engine beds are. You think that's adequate for 36 horsepower? Gee, I think so. Uh, pretty darn beefy. And this is a nice, uh, strong point. This is, of course, about the only place I can stand in this engine compartment because of the batteries over there. Uh, but um, if you wanted to add more batteries, that's uh, a very strong spot to do it. And there's not, other than the starter, there's not much on that side in the oil uh, thing. I've been looking at this just to figure out how to uh, suck the oil out of here. Pull the dipstick out, and it was <coughs> full up. Whoops, I messed it up. Full up, and, um, you know, diesel oil gets uh, black like that in half an hour, so that's not too unusual. But we'll, uh, we'll change it, give it some nice fresh oil, run it about three to five hours and then we'll do it all again change it again with a new new filter and new oil and uh, then she should be quite good so anyway that's uh, that's the story here you've seen the batteries before but uh, I needed to get in here and get familiar with this uh, I was trying to decide whether I was gonna hire somebody to come in to, and uh, do my uh, fuel filter and do the oil change on it or not but it isn't hard I'm gonna just uh, do it and it's not even that dirty I'm gonna take a solvent rag and wipe up some of the uh, oil that's leaked out over the last 25 years and make it nice and clean a little soap and water and uh, it'll be good to go so back in here you can see the new fuel tank that was added the old uh, uh, iron tank uh, was beyond the pale and so they put in this plastic one and uh, so I've been looking at that and looking at the plumbing. I took a whole bunch of still shots that I'll put on the uh, on the Facebook page. There's no way to put them on YouTube. And uh, that'll give you a whole look at all these little details. There'll be uh, still shots of all of that. So, this is Captain Larry saying thanks for watching. <laughs>